Well, good afternoon. Thanks for bearing with me there. I'm Robin Cutshaw, AA4RC, and I am a D-Star-holic. It's been two hours since I last keyed up, so I'm going to have to make this short so I can uh, get back out and key up on D-Star. Uh, I'm a network engineer, um, so of course I know everything better than anybody else from the standpoint of, of networking. And so I went in and configured the D-Star system differently than what they told us to do, but in a way that it should work and, you know, better, obviously. Uh, it worked until I went to do the digital data, the high-speed data. And then I learned that actually I had to follow what the Texas guys told us to do to make the system work right. And at that point I was like, okay, uh, I'm not just going to sit here and follow directions. I'm going to figure out why this didn't work the way I wanted it to work. Um, so as a network engineer and protocol geek, I said, fine, I need some tools. I need to monitor the network. You know, it's digital. It's bits and bytes. There's RF data going across the airways, but all the RF is just representing zeros and ones. So that's got to mean something. The key here is that it is an open protocol. You can do with it what you want. The only proprietary part of DSTAR is the vocoder, the chip that translates your voice into a digital stream and compresses it, and then takes that compressed digital stream and turns it back into audio that you can hear. That's made by a company called DVSI. Uh, it's the AMBA protocol, AMBE chip, that we use. And they're the same company that makes the IMBE chip that's in all of the APCO 25, the P25 radios. So they're the leader in the world in making compression technology for voice. And that's why it was chosen for um, the D-Star protocol. There are a lot of people that, that don't like the fact that there's something there that they have to go buy, but they are so far ahead of all of the open source codecs uh, that it just made sense to use this technology. Um, so we decided that we were going to learn a little bit more about how that chip worked um, and how the protocol worked uh, down at the bit level between the controller and the radio module. So I, I made this little board that sits in between the systems and basically does protocol analysis of the bits going back and forth. So I can see all of the call signs, the your call, the my call, repeater one, repeater two. I can see where people are coming, where people are going, what problems they're having. One of the interesting things is there's a bit in the protocol that says when the, the header you sent that has your call sign in it is not received intact. So you can actually tell and see that your data is bad when it came through. And that's one of the interesting things we learned early on in DSTAR is sometimes when I key up, it comes up with the call sign of somebody that keyed up before me. And we had people keying up and being able to talk through the gateway without ever being registered before. And it's a requirement that you're registered to be able to talk through the internet. And we couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, by reverse engineering some of these bits, we figured out that the ICOM controller is smart. It says, oh, I didn't get a good header from this guy. So there's a good chance it was the last guy that keyed up. So I'll just put in the last guy's header into this. So if you notice that on dstarusers.org, that web page that shows live all the users that are keying up anywhere in the world, uh, sometimes you'll notice when you key up, somebody else's call sign shows up. Well, now you know why. It's that one bit in the entire 660 bits that are sent through. Uh, that was set to tell the controller uh, it's not quite right, so use something that you know is right. One of the tools that I wrote, and this is a portion of the D-Star uh, eye chart, those in the back, if you can read the bottom line. Um, D-Shark was a, a tool that I wrote to be able to do the protocol analysis. So you can't see this, but it actually shows you the repeater one and repeater two and my call and your call and where people are going and what the IP addresses are on both sides. So that's how we uh, figure out when there's a problem with a system. We can go in and say, well, when I key up, it's not going to the right system. And oh, well, we just checked the IP address and the IP address changed. So now it's going to the old IP address instead of the new IP address. So it's one of those admin tools that's used by a gateway owner uh, to go into their system and see what's going on. Uh, I know you all wanted to know the bits and bytes. Uh, if you're going to sleep, please try not to snore. Um, 
But this is what the header of a DSTAR packet looks like. Uh, they've got some, uh, three flag bytes that are kind of control bytes to say what's going on, what it's trying to do. And then you can see in there, there's my call and your call, and there's voice and data. When they say simultaneous voice and data, uh, they really mean it. It's, it's not like you can say, well, I'm going to do just voice now and then I'm going to do data later. Uh, every voice and data frame alternates. So every time you key down, you're sending voice and data, whether you're plugging into your radio and sending data or not. And the radios notice that you're not actually plugged in and sending data, so they fill in that data st stream with redundant information, make sure that the header's getting through every time, um, they send through your GPS information. If you've got the, the really nice 2820 radio, uh, it has a GPS built in. So when you key down, you can send out your location, uh, like with APRS, uh, and that data is sent in that channel as well. So that, that data channel is always being used, regardless of whether you're typing into it or not. Uh, this is really the eye chart for DSTAR. Um, and I didn't want you to actually read the ones and zeros, but there are the ones and zeros. That's what a complete D-star uh, frame decode looks like. That, that is uh, a conversation where I just key down, set hello, unkeyed, and that's what it is. And the different colors show you the different portions of the packet. So if hopefully you can see color. Uh, red is the header where the my call, your call, repeater one, repeater two are. And the green is voice and the blue is data. So you can see in the stream where it's alternating the, um, the blue and the green, the voice and the data. Um, this is the infamous protocol document that uh, everyone should get if you can't get to sleep one night. I urge you to get a copy of this and start reading it. You'll have no problems. Um, some of the things that they didn't tell you were some of the things you really needed to do to implement the protocol. And the, the true magic of DSTAR from a bit level was this protocol order. They do three things to try to make sure that the bits that are going through make it all the way through. They use error correction, so it's corrected. You know, one third of the bits that are sent for the voice portion are error correction bits. Um, and they use Viterbi convolution. That was not mentioned in the document. Um, they also interleave so that, you know, if you take an RF hit, uh, their error correction works better. So if you get a, a long, somebody keys up on top of you, it might be able to uh, un-interleave the uh, data and be able to figure out what was actually sent. And then they also scramble it, uh, the ones and the zeros, so that uh, in telecom, you don't want a whole series of zeros or a whole series of ones to come together because you can't tell the voltage level then. So they scramble it so that the ones and zeros are um, interleaved uh, properly so that you don't get that condition. But that was the key thing that we found to be able to do that first D-star radio that, that Mo did. This is just another eye chart to show you what the, the protocol on the computer looks like. Um, there are bits going through both RF and there are bits coming through on the computer. This is what it looks like when the controller is talking to the gateway to try to send data out to the internet. Uh, even more eye chart, uh, this is the, the actual protocol itself represented in programming language. This is a C structure. So this shows you what it looks like. Um, and feel free to come by. We've got the DV dongle booth 225, and we can show you this up close and personal because I know from the first row back, you may not be able to read. And then just more information on things that we reverse engineered. They use two different protocols, one for RF and one for the Ethernet. Uh, more unreadable text. You uh, kind of get the idea. 